All right, here's an introduction to what we'll be doing in 5.2 and 5.3. What you'll see in both 5.2 and 5.3 is in these sections, we're gonna be talking about two different samples of data. So in the past, we've just had one sample of data and maybe if we were doing hypothesis testing, we'd compare that to some baseline value. But maybe you can imagine real life situations where you might wanna do some sort of comparison between two different sets of data. So we can do hypothesis testing or confidence intervals, but maybe it's easier to understand with hypothesis testing. Say that I'm interested in, um, I don't know, reading habits is one that I do sometimes. Suppose I have a suspicion that um, males read more than females, or sure, why not? Um, that's my claim, is that males read more books annually than females. And so that's my claim that I want to test, but I don't have any population values. All I can do is go out and collect some sample data. So maybe list A would be males and list B would be females. And then I'll have these two different sample averages that I can kind of go and compare. Well, kind of, because it turns out that when you have two sets of data, there's two different ways you can do your hypothesis test. And it'll turn out two different ways to do, make confidence intervals as well. And really the key difference between those two different ways is how the data was collected. If it was collected in one way, which I'm gonna introduce in just a second, then there is a specific way that you do the test. And if it's collected in a different way, there's a different way you do the test. Really what it comes down to is whether you have dependent data or independent data. And so what we'll do in this class is in 5.2, we're gonna have two sample data and it'll be dependent data. And in 5.3, we'll have two sample data, but it'll be independent data. And the whole purpose of this video is just to get you comfortable with the difference between dependent and independent data so that later on I can just give you a question and not tell you what section we're in. And you'll be able to tell, oh, clearly because of the way he described things, I have independent data as opposed to dependent data. By the way, dependent data, that's also sometimes referred to as a matched pairs design. And I will explain why. So back to my example, if these are males and these are females, let me give you two different ways I could collect this data. So maybe example one, I randomly select um, I don't know, 100 married couple, 10, I guess, not 100. There's 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, 10 observations in each list. I randomly select 10, I guess, heterosexual married couples. And for each couple, I record the, maybe I'll put dot, dot, dot. For each couple, I ask how many books the husband has read in the past year and how many books the wife has read in the past year. So the first couple, the husband read three books and the wife read four books. And then the second couple, the husband read five books and the wife read eight books and so on, All right? Maybe you can imagine this would be one way I could collect data. But what I want you to do is compare that with what I'll call example two. Example two, instead of grabbing 10 couples, I randomly select, I don't know, just 10 males. then randomly select 10 females. The key thing here is that the males and the females are not connected in any way. Randomly select 10 females. And record, I guess I don't even have to write record, I can say that, dot, 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 and record the reading habits of each. So in this case, these are my 10 males, these are my 10 females, and importantly, there's no connection between the two lists. So if in example one, these observations are connected, then I'll be able to do a given type of test. But if they're not connected at all, then I won't be able to do that type of test. Maybe I should give you the punchline at this point. 5.2, uh, we see an example of it in, in example one here. And example two is an example of what we do in 5.3. And really the key difference is, well, the words kind of imply exactly what we're doing. In 5.3, the two sets are completely independent of each other. There's no connection between the observations in the two lists. And in 5.2, the data is dependent. These observations are dependent upon these observations. The way I like to think about it, I think the easiest way, is the minute I put this person right here, third in my list, the second I put him here, I had to put his wife right here. The ordering of the second list is dependent upon the ordering of the first list. But in example two, the ordering doesn't matter at all. This male and this female are not connected at all. I could have listed, 
list B as four, five, eight, eight, nine. I could have switched the order of these two and it wouldn't matter at all because this observation is not connected to this one at all. So if the ordering of list B is dependent upon the ordering of list A, you have dependent data. And if the ordering of list B is independent of the ordering of list A, you have independent data. A couple more examples. Um, one that I thought that was kind of tricky that I think pops up in your homework is it was like a climate change thing. It's uh, rainfall. So I randomly select 10 cities in Europe and measure their rainfall in 1990. And then I randomly select 10 cities in Europe and measure their rainfall in 2020. Do I have dependent or independent data? That's kind of tricky. I think you'd have independent data. And the key thing there is implied in that question, although if this were a test, I'd have to make it more explicit, is that the cities that I grabbed in 2020 weren't at all related to the cities that I grabbed in 1990. It was just 10 different cities in 2020. But if I had worded that a little bit differently, if I said I randomly selected 10 cities and I first measured their rainfall in 1990 and then went back and measured their rainfall in 2020, if this is the same city here and here, then it's dependent data. If they're not the same cities, if these are just 10 cities and these are 10 different cities, then it'd be independent data. If you can follow the difference between the two of those, um, you could probably follow the difference for any of these. Just think about, does the ordering of my second list depend upon the ordering of my first list. Oh, maybe one more example. The example that I usually use when I teach this in class is uh, a boxing example. So suppose this is some measure of strength of punch, right? These aren't males and females. These are right hands and these are left hands. So imagine I randomly go out and I select 10 boxers and I measure how much power this first boxer has in his right hand and then how much power this boxer has in his left hand. And I don't know how I'm measuring power. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about units or anything. The point is just, this is one boxer's right hand and this is that same boxer's left hand. So if I were doing the study that way where there's only 10 boxers here and each boxer I'm measuring their right and their left hand, think about whether it'd be dependent or independent. And maybe I'll, before I tell you that answer, contrast that with a different study where I grab 20 boxers. I grab 10 boxers and I measure the accuracy of each boxer's right hand. And then I'm like, all right, thank you for your time. You know, see you later. And I go over and I grab 10 different boxers, completely unrelated to the first 10 boxers that I grabbed, 10 completely different boxers, and I only measure the power in their left hands. And then you can think about the difference in those two scenarios. The first scenario where it was just 10 boxers, I would have dependent data. And the second scenario where it was 20 boxers would have independent data. And the reason why is if I only have 10 boxers and I take one boxer and put his right hand right here, then his left hand has to be right here. But if these are 20 boxers, this observation doesn't have to be right here because this observation isn't related to this observation at all. That's the idea of dependent and independent data. Hopefully I beat it to death a little bit. I want you to be really comfortable with it because where most people lose credit in this is they start off wrong, right? Once you're comfortable with the difference between dependent and independent data, all you have to do is, oh, if it's dependent, here's how I solve it. Here's the calculator functions I use. If it's independent, here's how I solve it. Here's the calculator functions I use. Cool, I got those down and I'm done. We're just going to be repeating the same things we've done in the previous sections, hypothesis testing and confidence intervals. Just in some situations, we'll, we'll use new calculator functions based upon whether we have dependent or independent data. Anyways, I think that's plenty on the difference between the two.